Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here in New York City in the Big Apple, here on the floor of the NYSE, New York Stock Exchange, it's theCUBE's new East Coast studio location, looking down over the floor, of course, connecting business and technology together, going deep dives, looking at the journeys, extracting the data. And we're here with Marcos Torres, who's the CFO of Huntress, a leading cybersecurity company, defending companies, for moving technology to give the customers an advantage while maintaining the security posture. Marcos, thanks for joining theCUBE. Thank you so much, thank so, you for having me. So we were talking before we came on here, obviously theCUBE's here in New York, so business and technology come together. Couldn't speak more clearly to what you guys do. I mean, you guys are the center with cybersecurity at the heart of business operations. I mean, it's literally a breach could end a company. Yes. And so, you know, there's so many categories of security. It's like 13 plus different categories, endpoint, this, that. But when you boil it up, it's a data problem and a risk management problem. Solve those two, you're, in, you're looking good. That yes. seems to be the high order bit. Yeah, for the most part I would say, um, especially for companies that don't have the complexity or the budget to even think about it, or you know, sometimes even the time to think about these things. Uh, Huntress focuses especially on small uh, enterprises all the way down to small and medium businesses mm -hmm. that usually don't have teams that are even worried about the IT problem, let alone the cybersecurity problem. So being that thought leader who's bringing outcomes to these small and medium businesses, it's super key to keep uh, that 50% of the GDP that comes from small and medium businesses in business. Well, so I cover a lot of tech events and more and more CFOs are coming into the, our conversations on theCUBE, mainly because one, this financial investments involve heavy costs to deploy tools and platforms. Uh, it's a personnel and operational challenge, but it's also the risk management. You have to look and understand the threat landscape and look at your security posture as a financial kind of, like not, not financial purely, but like as a CFO, you got to look at the things that are important. Okay, defend, that's a, on the battlefield. Okay, you got troops for that, you got software. But at the end of the day, there's governance, guardrails, and things you got to pay attention to. If you don't get right, you have the best tech stack on the, in IT and in security, the best defense, red team, blue teams, methodologies, all that. But if you're not got the processes right, you got to do both. Yep. This is where we, we, we're seeing that play out right now. What's your reaction to that? What would you say to that? So my reaction to that is you're absolutely right. I mean, there, there is a financial implication and you know, from the CFO seat, um, you are responsible for the financials, but also the risk management, right? And part of risk management in cybersecurity is your security posture management, you know, X SPM, maybe I just came up with a new term. Um, <laughs> that's that's, that's the, the cool thing to do, you just add an X to whatever term you have already out there. So thinking about what is your security posture management and then what if? Because the reality is there is never 100% um, you know, cure or uh, defense. There's always going to happen, something that's going to happen and you got to be ready to minimize the impact of whatever happens. And having that mindset is uh, you have to be able to do both, defend and then uh, react and respond to whatever happens. Give us a presentation, not presentation, but okay. present and share the current snapshot of the business at Huntress. For the folks watching, if they know, might know Huntress, so give them some stats on that. Yep. For the folks that know of you, but might not know specifically what, up, what's new, sure. give the update, what's going on with the company, and give a quick snapshot of some of the results. Of course, so uh, Huntress, uh, especially we've been in the news lately, we are the latest and greatest uh, cyber security, both uh, Unicorn and Centaur, since uh, we you know, did a Series D with valuation of 1.55 billion um, post money, and also we just crossed a $100 million ARR um, from our entire business. So um, from that perspective, we are the uh, category leader of bringing cybersecurity to small uh, enterprises all the way down to small and medium businesses. Um, when you think about these businesses, for the most part, they either don't have an IT team in the payroll and they use external IT teams, call it an MSP, call yeah. it a service provider of some sort of fully managed IT, but those folks also don't have cybersecurity chops. So you got to have 
that fully managed cybersecurity platform that Huntress offers to make sure that uh, these businesses are protected. And these are businesses that can be all the way down from you know a dentist office, doctor's office, an accountant, all the way down to you know manufacturing, construction, healthcare, where uh, budgets are always tight. Yeah, you know, ransomware attackers, they're so well funded and their techniques are so good, they won't discriminate anyone who has money. Absolutely. The dentist office, healthcare, obviously getting killed with ransomware and killing people too. So the threats go up and down the market. Yes. Now the top 1%, they have the cash, the big wallets, the big companies. Correct. But when you talk about the small, medium-sized enterprise, you know, they're on you know, bootstrapped IT teams and they're spread thin. Correct. They're using a lot of cloud technology. So is that the sweet spot for your metrics? Is that where you guys are winning? Is that where the growth is? Absolutely, absolutely. So if you think about Huntress, Huntress is probably the first company that was founded and uh, targeting that small and medium businesses. It was not something that was built for the enterprise that you just brought all the way down to uh, the market by you know, diluting the products. Um, we were founded and created to make sure that we could deliver um, you know, top-notch cybersecurity uh, with yeah. both automation and experts at a cost that the SMB can't afford and also at a high gross margin. Huntress is right now running at 85 plus uh, gross margin, which is unheard of out in the industry when you think about both humans and machine all accounted for. So you're feeling good right now, CFO. You got a smile on your face, yes. spring in your step. That's Business correct. is good. Absolutely. What are the drivers and where do you see more growth coming? Obviously IPO on your horizon, uh, most likely I'm assuming that given those numbers, you're obviously an IPO candidate. Uh, as the CFO, you got to navigate the ship. It's still a growing market. The wave is coming still, I mean it's non-stop. Yes, yeah, of course there's a lot of things that are propelling and huge, huge tailwinds for the business. So if you think about um, the shortage of uh, talent, that is not going away, and nobody's really solving that. And the way Huntress is solving that problem is, um, we run a 24-7 SOC, so nobody has to go uh, you know, build or manage their own security team. Um, there's also, again, how the part of the market that we serve, the small enterprise and below, um, has been neglected yeah. by security uh, vendors traditionally because you know, those are expensive tools that require expensive experts to run those teams. And then you think about from the compliance side, cybersecurity, what the actuarial um, science is doing is they're looking at what is the Fortune 500 doing to protect themselves and then turn around and give those requirements to the SMB. The SMB cannot handle any of those things, cannot afford it, and just it's just a huge mismatch. And being that um, entity that can actually think about what are the true outcomes that the SMB needs to have, which is minimize uh, you know, the chances of getting an incident. And when you get an incident, how do you minimize your downtime? That is really what the uh, SMB wants to get because all um, an accountant cares is, can they file taxes on April 15th? Yeah. Yes or no. It doesn't matter what's protecting you, what it is. I just want the outcome, which is I want to be in business and get back in business yeah. if I can. I don't want any out. ransomware. I don't want anyone invading my system. Exactly. I don't want my data attacks. out there, that type of stuff. All right, so um, how, how old is the company? It's about 10 years old. So it's fairly young. Yes. So when, was the, uh, when did you guys re reach escape velocity on growth? Did, was there a moment in time where things kicked up? Was it, was it COVID? Was it, what was the key catalyst? I think it was COVID, especially because uh, you were talking about going to the cloud and, and digital transformation, which is interesting because digital transformation is kind of an old term, right? Like the Fortune 500, the enterprise, went through that, I don't know, 20 years ago. So it's kind of something in the past, but if you think about it, uh, right when COVID hit, most SMBs still had an exchange server sitting in the back room. Yeah. And the only reason that got moved was because nobody was going into the office, those expensive firewalls yeah. that people bought, completely useless because everyone was just working, uh, the, the endpoint just moved yeah, outside so cloud, of the perimeter. Not, they went to the cloud. Exactly, so they moved all those things to the cloud. So the SMB is really just going to probably yeah. year two of moving things to the cloud. So even though that wave passed for the enterprise 20 years ago, it is now the wave for um, you know, the SMB. Mar you know, Marcus, that's a really good point. If you think about an SMB around 2020, 2021 timeframe, you know, they might be a few years old on the adoption of technology. They probably had an all managed service. They probably didn't have a lot of IT. If they did, it was maybe an exchange server or some small stuff around Correct. lands that they might have in an office. But for the most part, they were probably cloud native. Yes. And so, okay, in comes the pandemic. They're not impacted like a big enterprise. There's no real disruption on provisioning, uh, you know, <laughs> at work at home connectivity, which no one could forecast 100% disruption. Correct. And that, so that was a whole other issue on their side. But SMBs and SMEs, they were cool. 
And then, okay, now cyber hits. Ransomware becomes product market fit right around that time too. I mean, it was ransomware before, but it didn't really, yeah. I mean, it became a, a, a vanity celebrity market, which it is now. I mean, these, these ransomware ring units, they're like influencers. Yep. They yep. got TikTok accounts. Yep. No, of course. I mean, so they got, <laughs> so it's like, they're making bank. Yes. They're, they're printing money. And I think that's the one thing that most people uh, miss about hackers and ransomware gangs. I mean, just to be super upfront, ransomware gangs are organized crime you know, period. Period. That yeah. is it, right? Um, and you can actually start seeing the um, all, the old school organized crime getting into the business, which is an extremely profitable business. So if you start thinking about that, um, hacking 20, 30 years ago used to be about smash you know espionage, you know, <laughs> smash and grab, get yeah. in, steal the data, axle trade, um, a lot of you know state um, yeah. threat actors. Right now, it's a business. It's yeah. a multi-billion dollar business. I mean, we don't know where yeah. those funds are going. Yeah. I mean, certain you know, rogue states, who the hell knows? But the reality is, there's a huge incentive to continue doing this, yeah. and it's completely And by the way, when they take someone down, they come back for more. Of course, it's yeah. Like, yeah, they try to hate like you on the reputation side. It, yeah, exactly. It's ARR for them. Yes. I mean, this is, I mean, I is. said jokingly, I was serious on theCUBE, it's product market fit yes. years ago, so now they perfected the scale, so they have escape velocity, and now we've been reporting on SiliconANGLE, and as you well know, because you're in the business, um, ransomware as a service, I could start a ransomware yep. game. Yep, and, of course. And dial we've up actually, a managed service. Funny enough, we've actually seen in the dark web, uh, they run promotions where, you know, that split between the person who's deploying the ransomware and the one doing the payment processing, they'll give you a few more points because it's Halloween or it's, you know, uh, I don't know, Memorial Day. You get weekend. affiliate links, it's like pay per click. They, they absolutely do, and that is the thing that people miss. This is not, yeah. you know, um, a hacker with a hoodie behind a keyboard trying to get yeah. in. No, it, this is spray and pray, and believe me, there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of endpoints just falling, you know, victim of these type of things every day. You know, I got to ask you on the business model side, as you guys look at the growth, obviously uh, IPO in your future, are you still guys looking at filing an IPO, staying private? So, you know, we're, I, we're very open to outcomes. Um, once you get to a certain number of valuation, there's only a handful of names that can buy you and yeah. there's you know, a certain amount of uh, uh, transactions that happen. So usually liquidity could be an IPO, but yeah. we're not necessarily set on an outcome just yet. Well, the focus of the company, we're very mission driven and we're just here to protect yeah. the SMB. So whatever that leads us to, we yeah. really believe that, it's a, that's a nice that's CFO right? answer. Can you, I haven't made the decision <laughs> yet. No, but I mean, you're in rarefied air. You're at ARRs that are in the numbers. You're starting to hit the, hit the bells in terms of like all the, all the check boxes. Correct. And, but I think it's still early. Again, I'm not saying you should go public. I mean, I'm a big fan of private companies personally. Um, only when you're ready with all the machinery. I mean, going public's a real big deal. Of course. I mean, there's compliance, but there's benefits to going public because now everything's out, out there. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, pros it's a and huge cons. brand exercise. Yeah. It really gets your name out there. Yeah. I mean, to me, my interest obviously in the Cube is technology conversations, and we love seeing IPOs as more of a, the beginning of another journey. But the real action with CFOs right now, from our perspective, is the view on um, the boardroom conversations. It's clear that the boardroom level conversation has to be culturally matched to the, the technology stacks, uh, platforms, and tools, and the processes that go with it. So, you're seeing a challenge on the tech side where you got to have, the, in your case, the owners or management of SMEs saying, hey, okay, we're going to go as a service, but I got to make sure everything's covered. And then they have to support that. Um, that becomes a big cultural thing. We're seeing a lot of conversations. You guys, a little bit different because you're like almost like, I won't say AWS, but you're like a managed service for security. Correct, yeah, that's are, exactly it. You are, I'm sure the consumption's you cloud-based? Yes. On-prem oh. anything? No, no there's no on-prem, no, all cloud, and that was something that we did on purpose. So making sure that it was simple um, and that it matched the way the, um, both the external and internal IT departments work in terms of integration with all their other tools, but also their business model, right? Uh, if you think about SMBs, there's not a whole lot of cash to pay, you know, a 12 month or 36 month deal upfront, like you don't have yeah. that kind of cash. So being able to offer a flexible pricing model where you have minimums, where you have overages, uh, where your commitment gets you better pricing, where especially for external IT departments, you actually get to resell and turn your break 
like fixed business into um, and ARR model as well. That's where everyone is going. It's just basically yeah. the as a service model. Okay, so I do have to ask the capital markets question. Since you are a private company, of course, um, you guys are flush with cash. You had ARR coming in, so you're profitable, or are you guys raising money? Not prof What's not profitable. Um, we raised uh, 150 million dollars on a Series D in uh, Q2 of this year. Okay, so you um, got you got some dry powder. We we have plenty. And you got of dry revenue powder. coming in. Correct. You got so, plenty of runway. Yes. So, so we're not profitable, but the runway but you're is reinvesting. Just, yeah, exactly. We're right, so what are those well. investment areas? What are you doubling down on? What's the, obviously you're in growth mode, so yes. yeah, you can burn some capital, not burn, but like use investment capital to grow. What are the areas you're looking at investing in? Sure. So big time uh, R&D, uh, because if you think about um, the needs of uh, the small and medium enterprise and the SMB, we're not, we're, we're not done building this platform right. that effectively should be the security stack for the SMB. Um, there's a lot of things around education, so um, we, generally talk about our flagship product, which is our managed ADR, but there's also a security awareness training uh, yeah. program that we run because the reality is a lot of these ransomware, a lot of these incidents happen with humans clicking on the wrong thing. Yeah. And educating folks, educating the market, it's a yeah. huge part of our thought leadership uh, process. But uh, talking about R&D, which is the original question, um, there's a lot of more products that we can bring to the market. Um, with our stance on how it should be done for the SMB, maybe the outcomes are the same that you're getting in the enterprise world, but it needs to be completely different. So how's your go-to-market? Your go-to-market sounds like it's probably very lightweight, yes. leverage, pull model in. High velocity, we close 200 plus logos on any month, and uh, on the external IT uh, department side, we are closing potentially hundreds of businesses through yeah. each one of those logos yeah. because we're deploying 20 to 40% of those uh, fleets that are out there. So your, your investment is R&D and product portfolio. Go to, create, to market and R&D, exactly. And create kind of the, that shield yes. for enterprises, small and medium sized enterprises. Yeah, exactly, it's, it's a land and expand model. So we started with our yeah. managed TDR product, but we have expanded tremendously with the security awareness uh, uh, product, the ITDR product that's been around for about a year, protecting those identities out there. And we just recently released um, our own SIM, which is our version, our flavor, our very opinionated product on how SIM should operate and the outcomes that the SMB needs while still you know, following what the product should be doing. Well, Marco, it's great to have you on theCUBE. Thank, Thank you, you so much. On. I'll give you the last word. Put a plug in for what you guys are doing, folks watching, what you guys are looking for, you're hiring, you're expanding. If people are watching and they want to buy your service, how do they engage? Go ahead, take it all away. All the above. I mean, I would say Huntress.com is probably the best place to look at all our offering. Um, we are generally focused on small, medium enterprises all the way down to small and medium businesses. Um, it's a product that is uh, made to compete with um, the highest price things out there that require you to build security teams. If you really want to take that off your plate, um, Huntress is a managed security platform that uh, can take away all your problems when it comes to cyber. All right, theCUBE's bringing you all the action, protecting you from misinformation, getting you all the data, of course, big payloads going on here in the security conversation. I'm John Furrier here in our East Coast studio on the floor of the NYSE. Thanks for watching.